Welcome to the Collegiate iRacing League at our Fuji Grand Prix here in the Collegiate Prototype Challenge. This is the 11th of 14 races on our calendar, and it is a wet race today from, from beside Mount Fuji in Japan. I'm Sky Shrek from the University of Oklahoma. I'll be your caster for tonight as we get to see these drivers take on 45 minutes in the rain at the iconic Fuji Speedway in Japan. We're going through qualify or uh, practice into qualifying here soon. These drivers setting their lap times, getting a couple extra laps in of practice before we get ready for tonight's race. Track situated in the hills of Japan, right near the iconic Mount Fuji, a national landmark, really a global landmark. This track sits right in the shadow of it. It's a scenic track. And with the fog and the rain we've got here today, we've got some great mountain vibes going on for this race tonight. Taking a look around some of these corners here at this racetrack. It's a very fast racetrack. A lot of long straightaways, fast flowing corners. The third and final section is a bit tricky, but most of the track you're going to be uh, very fast. Very flowing, very technical racetrack is what we're expecting to see today from these drivers as we wrap up practice. It's Jordan Johnson from Kent State University, who's won all but, I believe, one or two races this year. Currently out here in that first place position in practice in that Acura ARX 06 prototype car. Making his way around the racetrack here to this final sector. Bring it around here. This is the final corner of the racetrack. We'll spit it back out onto the front straightaway here. An extremely long front straightaway at this racetrack compared to many other tracks really everywhere. And he'll spit it out as practice comes to an end. And we get ready for qualifying. These drivers are going to have 10 minutes to set the best lap that they can. Try and move themselves up on the board. 16 drivers tonight, representing many different colleges. You've got the ever-present St. Clair, Ball State in the field, along with many others. Clemson, Marist, Virginia, all here tonight. Athena LeClaire, our Watkins Glen winner. She won the last time we had a rain race in this series. She'll be looking to repeat here at Fuji. First driver out to make her qualifying lap, heading through turn five right now. Big, long, right-hand corner. Takes you back out into a hairpin and then onto another long, flat-out section of racetrack into the more technical third sector here at Fuji. Heading down that straightaway now. Onto a short little straightaway before you get another uh, quick right hander into that hairpin down here. Uh, turns 13, 14, and 15 complex for one more hairpin. And then you're back out onto the main straightaway for the rest of the, or for the next lap. This is the out lap right here. Most of our drivers out on the racetrack right now. We're going to go on board with her as she takes it down the front straightaway. One of the longest straightaways in motorsport here at Fuji. All the way down this thing. From one hairpin to another. Coming down to turn one. Cross the start finish line there. Windshield wiper going in the rain. She'll get on the brake. Start slowing it down for turn one. Get through it right there. Like I said, the opening section of this track, very fast. We're going to get down the straightaway here. You're going to go back through turn three. It's a pretty quick corner in the dry. Have to take it a little bit slower with the rain that we're going to be experiencing all race. Sliding, slipping, and sliding through turns four and five there. Trying to hold on to the car. And set that qualifying lap and a bit of a lock up there is going to make that difficult as well the rain really adding a new challenge to this track for these drivers 
sending them offline a little, making some of these corners that you wouldn't think twice about in the dry really tricky here in the wet. Through the turn 11, 10 and 11 chicane, and she is around. Athena LeClaire misses the chicane entirely, spins it out on her qualifying lap, and that is going to set her back. Watching Jordan Johnson now taking pole in pretty much every race he's run this year. Heading through turn seven, back up into one of the faster sections of sector two. Through the flat out corner with the spray going behind that race car. He'll make it through the chicane just fine. And he'll come back out now onto the straightaway before turn 13 here. There nicely, we're going to see some of our drivers start to set their qualifying times here as Jordan Johnson finishes up his lap. First driver on the board is going to be Ryan Whitlock from Alabama Huntsville. Lucas Moody's finished his lap as well. So is our Muhammad Alif, both of Ball State. Jordan Johnson will come out of that final corner and he's going to move to finish his lap here. We'll see how he gets it on in the rain. One thing you're going to want to keep in mind tonight as we head uh, further into this race is the 107% rule present in this series. These drivers either in quality or warm-up or practice, I believe, need to run within about 107% of the leader's time. And with Jordan Johnson going out and provisionally running 2.4 seconds faster than everyone else except for Bradley Skinker, that might make this harder on some of those cars further down, like Adrian Tubakovich of St. Clair. Thomas Toomey from the University of Virginia, of, of Virginia part-time driver in this series, making his second lap in that Acura through turns six and seven right here. And he'll bring it down flat out. I believe some of the cars that we have at risk of that 100% rule are going to be Adrian Tubakovich, Alan Hong, and then one other driver. I believe it might be... No, it's not Thomas Tim. It's one other driver uh, who failed to set a time within 100%, 107% in practice, and we'll have to do it either in quality or warm-up here for the race tonight. As we see Thomas Tumi head through that final hairpin, back out onto the front straightaway. And we got some good lap times coming in now. Ryan Whitlock has jumped to third, while our Muhammad Alif jumps ahead of Jordan Johnson right now. But we're going to see about three cars moved across the line at the same time behind Thomas Kubi. And that could throw a wrench into this as well. So we'll see how this goes. Lucas Moody's going to head down into turn three. And I'm waiting to see this timing board update because Johnson just completed a lap and is now back on pole by eight-tenths of a second over our Muhammad Alif. Adrian Tupikovic and Alan Hong, the St. Clair cars, who we saw do so well at Watkins Glen, finishing first, third, and fourth, currently qualifying 11th, 13th, and 14th here with Turek and Burl having not set laps yet. And Moody's going to come around here, this third sector, into turn 13. We'll take him down into a pretty uh, pretty series of back-to-back -back hairpins here. 14, 15 right there, and he'll send it out into 16 to complete his lap. Three minutes to go in qualifying, and Lucas Moody almost spins it out coming out of the final corner. That'll be devastating for his lap time because now he's going to have a huge speed disadvantage down the straight and he'll just park it and end qualifying there lucas moody will not get to run another lap he doesn't have the time to get it in as we're seeing a couple other drivers finish up now turek and burl still do not have lap times on the board a hatesty is going to come across here to me jordan johnson for one more clint halterman will run a lap there doesn't quite get him anywhere. Our Muhammad Alif cuts the gap down to Johnson, but Johnson immediately extends it back up. So we'll see how that shakes out. And I believe the last driver who still has laps left 
is going to be Clint Halterman. Although we might have a couple more out here. I see Clint Halterman's still out. Uh, Jordan Johnson, Thomas Toomey are both still out. And so is uh, Clemson's Hunter Hadesty all running uh, their final laps in qualifying right here. They're all, they're all kind of close to each other. They're head through the chicane here. It's Halterman, uh, Johnson, and Toomey. And Johnson will stop it as well. So Halterman and Toomey are the two cars left running qualifying laps here with a minute 43 left in quali. Adrian Tubakovic has parked the car in the last turn and is maybe trying to get a last second lap run going, but I don't think he's going to get to the line in time. Uh, Clint Halterman's going through that turn 13 to 14 section right now, along with Thomas Toomey. And yeah, Tubakovic will just stop the car there. So, so uh, Halterman's going to come through that last corner trying to set a better lap time here to get himself back on track, get himself a little further up that field right now. And he'll come to the line here. Where will Clint Halterman qualify? Can he do it? Toomey had a spin in the last corner, so he won't set that lap. And Halterman will improve to eighth, so he'll beat out Lucas Moody. Kale Davidson is still out on track, but I believe this might be an outlap. So I'm not sure if he's going to actually get to run this lap, but we'll see how this shakes out. He's currently 13th, or he's currently 5th uh, going through turn 13. And he'll head back down 14 and 15. how slow he's having to go with the wetness on this racetrack really throwing him off here and he'll come across the line i think i do not believe this lap is going to be better than what he's ran but we will see Kale davidson across the line and he will crash into the wall for the fun of it all right so kale davidson will roll off fifth tonight and our pole sitter for tonight's race at fuji is going to be Kent State University's Jordan Johnson for what feels like the 12th time this season in 11 races. We'll get those qualifying results set up here for you shortly, and we can take a look at tonight's grid. Starting on pole will be Kent State's Jordan Johnson, with our Muhammad Alif continuing to try and dethrone him starting second. Ryan Whitlock from Alabama Huntsville will roll off third, and Alif's teammate at Ball State, Bradley Skinker, will qualify fourth. Kale Davidson, the third Ball State car, is in fifth, while Edwin Onofre from the University of North Texas will be sixth. Ben Fiore of Marist College will be seventh, and Clint Halterman of UNC Charlotte will be eighth tonight. In ninth place, uh, I believe we have Lucas Moody uh, from Ball State University, the final Ball State car in the field, uh, and to his outside will be Thomas Toomey from the University of Virginia. Hunter Hadesty will roll off 11th for Clemson, and Athena LeClaire 12th for St. Clair. And we're going to be checking the 107% rule on the rest of these cars. Adrian Tubakovic and Alan Hong of St. Clair, 13th and 14th, with Mark Turek and Andrew Burrell, both not setting times, listed as 15th and 16th. Adrian Tubkovic heading around right now. As mentioned, he and Alan Hong, and I believe Andrew Burl, uh, will not be good by the 107% rule. Mark Turek, I believe, has set a lap time good enough in uh, practice that will allow him to make tonight's race. We're still seeing three cars. I'm showing Hong, Tubkovic, and the 225, and I'm trying to determine what car that is, and we'll find out which one of them is at risk of not making the race tonight. Actually, that'll be Mark Turek. So Mark Turek is also uh, in violation of the 100% rule. Burl set a fast enough lap time in practice that he will be good for tonight. We're watching Alan Hong right now on his outlap head through this final sequence of corners here. This is going to take him through that final hairpin onto that front straightaway. And this is going to be a really important lap for him because this is going to determine if he gets to run in tonight's race with that 100% rule or 107% rule. He need to be within 107% of 
of the leader's lap time, and Alan Hong and Adrian Tubakovic have both not hit it, both from St. Clair. So this is going to be Hong's really last shot to try and get into the show tonight. We saw him fourth at Watkins Glen after a pretty heroic effort there, one of very few cars to last through that entire rain race. And he got a really good finish out of it, so we'll see what he can do here. Heading down into the left-hander, turn three. It's slow out of that corner, but with the rain, there's not a lot you can do. This is going to be the big right-hander. It's a corner you don't think much about in the dry, but with how wet this track is, it can be very difficult. And he nearly spins it right there going over the curb. Big moment for Alan Hogg, and he nearly does it again. That cannot be good for his lap time, and he comes out of turn seven onto the straight. Full throttle through turn eight. Going to come down into turns nine and ten here. The chicane complex, or I believe ten and eleven here. Alan Hogg will make it around through twelve. He'll get back out onto the straightaway. Big lap from Jordan Johnson there, our pole sitter in warm-up but he'll run through 13 14 15 and 16 the final four corners on this racetrack and if he can't get close to jordan johnson he will not be in the race tonight tubakovich has actually spun so tubakovich has crashed the car behind him he doesn't have enough time to set another lap that might take him out and a horrendous last corner for alan hong almost sends it off the track there and has to get on the brakes just to keep it from getting an off track. What's he going to do here? We will see. He's going to come across the line. What is Alan Hong going to run? He is 13 seconds off that Jordan Johnson warm-up lap. And that warm-up lap's about 4 seconds off his quality lap. So I'm not, not sure. I do not believe that'll be enough for Alan Hong to make the race tonight. We might see a field of 13 cars starting with Turek, Hong, and Tubakovic. All not on the grid for tonight's race. And potentially Andrew Burrell as well. Uh, who I'm not sure if he's in the session. So we'll get an update on that. We're going to go to the grid here. These drivers going to get hit the grid. confirmation on our grid for tonight but we'll look one more time at the starting lineup here jordan johnson from kent state will roll off on pole with our muhammad ali from ball state to his outside ryan whitlock from alabama huntsville will roll off third with bradley skanker of ball state in fourth another ball state car kale davidson in fifth with edwin Onofre from unt in sixth marist college's ben fiore rolls off seventh while clint halterman of unc charlotte will roll off eighth tonight in ninth, it's going to be Lucas Moody from Ball State University. And to his outside, it'll be, I believe, Thomas Toomey from the University of Virginia. We're going to try to roll this down here. Hunter Hadesty will be 11th from Clemson. And to his outside, it'll be Athena LeClaire from St. Clair. And we're still getting further confirmation here, but it's looking like Adrian Tubakovic, Alan Hong, and Mark Turek have all fallen victim to the 107% rule. Uh, not running lap times fast enough in either practice or qualifying to make the grid tonight. With Andrew Burrow also, I believe, slightly off, although I'm not sure if he has taken to the grid. So we'll get a further update there as well. And Burrow is on the grid, so Burrow will be in tonight's race. We got the cars here. They're going to come through this third sector, get ready to go tonight for the Fuji Grand Prix. And yes, final word from race control. We talked about it in warm-up. Alan Hong, Adrian Tubakovic, and Mark Turek all in the rain have not made the 107% rule. So with Burrow making it and being on the grid, we'll get 13 cars to go tonight. We're heading to the final hairpin right now. It's Johnson on pole, the pretty clear favorite for this race. But last time we had a rain race, he crashed before it even started raining. Our Muhammad Alif is second. Ryan Whitlock is in third, and Bradley Skinker is fourth. Everyone's all on each other's bumper, driving through the spray here. We're getting ready to go tonight. 
CIL from Mount Fuji. The pace car is getting ready to pull off into the pit lane to start tonight's race. There it goes, diving into the pits down this long front straightaway. It's going to be Jordan Johnson on pole. Our Muhammad Alif to his outside. Final pacing down the front straightaway. And we hit the line. Green flag in the air for the Fuji Grand Prix in the Collegiate Prototype Challenge. And Jordan Johnson is checking out already. Huge run from him. Ryan Whitlock trying to get something going in third. Our Muhammad Alif in second. And Jordan Johnson's missed the corner. Bad turn for him is going to drop him back to second with Art Muhammad Alif pulling away to the lead for the time being. It's Jordan Johnson in second and Ryan Whitlock in third for now. Bradley Skinker and Cale Davidson side by side for fourth in that Ball State card. Edwin Onofre behind him and Fiore back there in seventh. Made it to the first couple turns okay and Edwin Onofre has gone around. He's off the racetrack. Huge off for Edwin Onofre back there. That'll drop him a couple spots. He was running sixth. He'll get passed by Lucas Moody, and now he's running in tenth. Because now we're back side by side with Skinker and Davidson. Two ball state cars. Skinker will get the position for now, heading down into turns 10 and 11. Bradley Skinker on board here, chasing down Ryan Whitlock, who's in third. One second back of Jordan Johnson. And Clint Halterman's had an accident. Clint Halterman has crashed, he's fallen back to last, missed the chicane entirely, and I think bumped that car along one of the practice barriers, trying to get it through the little access road right there. It's Kale Davidson in fifth, still on the bumper of his teammate Bradley Skinker. Two different types of a uh, prototype there. You got one of them in the Acura, one of them I believe in the Cadillac, and that's a little bit of a setup difference between these two teammates. I'll make that always makes things interesting in these races. Heading down the big, it's one of the biggest front straightaways in motorsports, really. It is a very long straightaway, and it feels even longer when you're driving down it. Big send from Cale Davidson there, but he's not close enough to make anything happen, and he'll stay behind his teammate, Bradley Skinker. You see all the spray being kicked up from these cars, and I'll tell you the start of this race has felt a lot better than what happened at Watkins Glen. We saw the rain start coming down when we went to Watkins Glen. And within just a couple laps, it felt like we'd see about half the field have an accident. They're managing it better today. Uh, we've only seen two spins so far from Minofre and Holtman, and they both got it going with relatively little damage thanks to the big amount of runoff here. It's an Ofre up the inside of Athena Leclerc right now for that ninth place position. Nofre is going to get the spot. Leclerc drops in behind him. That's a big move from an Ofre who we saw have that spin out earlier. He'll be back to ninth right now trying to chase down Lucas Moody in eighth. Currently four seconds back and Leclerc almost misses the chicane there again. The children remain in tenth for now with Hunter Hadesby in that Clemson car trying to make a move behind her. The spray being kicked up from the three cars all in line there. Hadesby, Burl, and Halterman all running just outside the points here in 11th through 13th, respectively. Through turns 14 and 15 here, we're going to head into the final chicane of this racetrack and back out onto that front straightaway here for Athena Leclerc. Right behind Edwin Onofre, who's still got that five-second gap in front of him, the Lucas Moody. Here's that battle for fourth that's still raging. It's Bradley Skinker and Cale Davidson for that spot. Skinker is holding it. He's still got that half a second lead over his teammate Davidson as they head down the straightaway turns towards turn, turn three and then the eventual turn four right-hander here. See them come through that right-hander. We've seen a couple cars get loose in this section. Like I've said, it's not a part of the track you really think about in the dry, especially in these cars, but in the wet, it's a whole different story. It's really easy to slip the car, spin it out there if you make a mistake, especially on newer tires. As Davidson's still about half a second back of Skinker, make, trying to make something happen into turns 10 and 11 down here. We've had another spin further back. Athena Leclerc spun it around for 10th. She's gotten it going, but she's lost out to both Hadesty and Burl. 
and has dropped back to 12th, the only St. Clair car to get under that 107% rule and make tonight's race, and she's not having a good go of it. I mean, we saw her win the last CIL road race at Watkins Glen, a race only four cars managed to finish, but tonight she is struggling and now under threat uh, from Clint Halterman in a battle for last place here. So we're back on the battle for the lead. Jordan Johnson went off the track, turn one, dropped back by about half a second, but he is here and he is looking to the inside or the outside of Art Muhammad Ali side by side into turn one for the lead of this race. And they're gonna stay side by side on exit. Alif and Johnson right next to each other as they head out of that corner down the straightaway. Jordan Johnson's gonna get the inside into turn three and Alif will drop him behind and he'll try a bit of a crossover. He'll actually get it to stick. Heading down into turn four, it's Alif on the outside of Johnson. Still going here and Alif is gonna make the move on the outside of turn five. He'll get the spot through turn six, and R. Muhammad Alif is back to the lead of this race. Jordan Johnson peeks inside into eight. He's not close enough to get there. He's going to be right on the bumper here, and he'll look to the outside going into this back and forth turn 10 chicane, and he'll miss the corner entirely. Jordan Johnson off the racetrack has to go through the access road, and that is going to forfeit about two seconds to that leader, R. Muhammad Alif. And that's a gap he's going to need to make all the way back up. And we saw another car go off further back. That was Clint Halterman in last having an issue through either turn five or six there. He went very wide. We're on the battle for fourth. It's still Skinker and Davidson going after it. These two Ball State teammates, I doubt they want to race each other that hard out of uh, concern for both of them being teammates, but I'm sure the friendly competition is there. They still want to go after it and get these positions here. And it's going to be Davidson looking up the inside of Bradley Skaker. That's coming down towards turn one. A big front straightaway. A lot of space to get that slipstream. I'm trying to make the move happen there alongside. And Skaker is going to give him the spot. So Cale Davidson given fourth by his teammate Skaker. And we'll see if he can make a run up towards third place. Ryan Whitlock from Alabama Huntsville. So we head down into turns three towards turn four. Still watching uh, Cale Davidson there. Going to go on board with him a second ahead of his teammate already starting to pull away. Five seconds in front of that sixth place car, Ben Fiore. And about two and a half behind Brian Whitlock in third. But Cale Davidson showing that he might be the faster Ball State car because he is pulling away from Whitlock right now. Or he's pulling away from Skinker, pulling towards Whitlock as uh, Andrew Burrow has gone off in the background there. Did he hit the wall or did he just go really wide? We might try to figure out what happened there. And we'll get a replay of Andrew Burrow. Oh, he spins the car out and goes straight into the wall. That's in turn four, I believe. That is a weird spot for that to happen. And Edwin Onofre has just had an accident. He's around in turn 10. He is way off the racetrack there. I believe he might have had to take that access road uh, past turn 10 that you have to take when you miss the corner. But that's dropped him a spot to Hunter Hadesky get a replay of what happened there and a no fright with a massive lockup we've seen a couple cars lock it up into there but i think that is the worst we've seen all race by far he i mean he completely missed the access road and ended up in the grass there Ooh, burl we'll see if what happens to burl if he ends up having to pit that car to fix some of the damage that he sustained there in that huge crash but it's Ryan Whitlock right now in that third position. And Cale Davidson has closed the gap. It was two seconds when he got around Skinker. He's already three seconds ahead of Bradley Skinker and one second back of Ryan Whitlock. That car is fast, and he's going to try to make some ground up here. Not just on Whitlock, but on our two leaders, R. Muhammad Alif and Jordan Johnson. Here we go. This is for 11th, or this is for 10th. This is Clint Halterman looking around Athena LeClaire for 10th. 
They're side by side through turn five. It's going to be Leclerc on the inside into the turn six hairpin. And Leclerc is going to hold it for now. Halterman got out on the curb and got a little slidey there. So he'll forfeit the spot to Leclerc for now. As we're back on third. Kale Davidson is there as Athena Leclerc has just missed the corner and dropped back to 12th. Kale, uh, Kale Davidson is there. He's right on the bumper now of Ryan Whitlock for that position. Trying to get onto the podium to continue that Ball State podium train. We'll see if he can do it here. Down into the corner. We're watching Edwin Anofre as that battle is unfolding. Yeah, we're going to be back on that. It's Ryan Whitlock still with in threat of Kale Davidson. Half a second there for that battle. And we'll see how that plays out over these coming laps. I mean, we've seen Davidson close that two-second gap up in no time at all. And now he's on the inside. That is a interesting place to get on the inside of a car. But he's going to make it work. He'll have to drop back for turn six. So we'll head through that hairpin out into this little turn seven, turn eight, flat out kink area as Ben Fiore is, oh, he's being showed as in the pits. I don't think he's actually in the pits. Edwin Onofre has crashed in turn one. So we'll get a replay of that at some point as Ryan Whitlock has missed the last corner entirely. So he's going to go way wide there. He's gone so wide, he has to put it in reverse just to get to the access road. He's going to drop behind Davidson, Skinker, Fiore, and maybe even Thomas Toomey. It looks like he's stuck in the gravel, and he's struggling to actually get that car back out on the racetrack with all the rain that we've got here. So Leclerc is out of the race. Uh, Leclerc might have had an accident to be out of the race, but we see... Uh, Edwin Onofre and Clint Halterman have both pulled it into the pits as well. Edwin Onofre, I saw, had a big crash in turn one, and he lost about 20 seconds. As this is the battle for eighth, this is Lucas Moody looking on Ryan Whitlock, the car we just saw go very wide. Moody will pull it up the inside there, down the straightaway, and Whitlock is likely coming into the pit lane here. You see him slow there down the straightaway and it was going to drive past the pit lane so he slowed up about five seconds there from lucas moody just kind of let him go so now moody's going to try to pursue thomas toomey for six and it's jordan johnson who's got that gap back down under a second for our leader our muhammad Ali, and he's going to make a third try to take the lead of that race in only 13 minutes that we've had so far in this session so we'll come down through here into turns 10, 11, and 12. The really quick right, left, right, very technical section. It's where we've seen by far the most accidents happen from cars just locking it up into 10 and going way wide. And as I say that, uh, Bradley Skinker has locked it up into 10 and gone way wide. And Ben Fiore has had some type of accident behind him because it's allowed Thomas Toomey through for fifth. Uh, Jordan Johnson still in second, eight tenths back of our Muhammad Alif, but a bad corner there is going to drop him way back. The slipstream will help him though, he gets a better run out to make up for that bad corner and he'll get the gap right back down to what it was before and closing down this straightaway. So he'll make the run down here into turn one, and now we've got a three car train. Hunter Hadesty has had a big issue in that final chicane as well. Just constantly looking at the track map and seeing cars off the track through turn 10. Just almost every lap it feels like is this Thomas Toomey under threat from Ben Fiore and Lucas Moody for 5th, 6th, and 7th positions here. So we'll come down this straightaway into turn one no one's really close enough to make anything happen just yet but they're all in line and they're all going to try to make a move happen jordan johnson's got that gap still hovering about seven tenths of a second for the lead of this race our muhammad alif has not won a race that jordan johnson has been in this season and when we asked him about it in the interview after he won that race, 
He said it didn't feel real because Johnson wasn't there to battle it out with him. Well, he's getting that right now because him and Johnson are pulling way away from the rest of the pack. Ten seconds in front of their teammate, uh, Kale Davidson. And that battle we've wanted to see all season has finally developed tonight for the lead of this race. As Ben Fiore is hounding uh, Thomas Tooby trying to get that fifth position. So they'll come through turns uh, 13 and 14 here. And Moody will still be on the back of him into that final corner. Hadesty and Onofre have crashed into each other in the last chicane, or in turn 10. Turn 10, my bad. Onofre and Hadesty just crashed into each other through there, I believe. We might get a replay, but I saw them off the track at the exact same time in the exact same spot. And they were battling with each other beforehand. So we'll get a replay and try to figure out what happened. Oh, they both missed the corner. So they didn't, they don't collide with each other. Both of them just kind of individually missed the corner at the same time. And Anofra ends up hitting that left rear, trying to get through that really tight complex. Ryan Whitlock has pulled it into the pits here from eighth position. We've only got 10 cars left in this race, so all of them will earn points tonight. It goes a long way towards our season ending prize fund for a lot of these drivers. Watching Thomas Toomey in fifth right now. Still under threat from Ben Fiore. It's showing pit lane for him occasionally on that sidebar. That is uh, a sign of internet issues for that Marist College car. It's not something... He's not actually in the pits, but the game is not registering his position on the track due to some sort of lag uh, present with that car. So that's what's happening with that uh, Marist College machine as it moves through turns 14 and 15, right behind Thomas Toomey of UVA. And you see it happening right there. We're on board with him, lags out, takes us off him. So we're going to go on to Thomas Toomey here in fifth through that final corner. Let's see if Fiore can get a good run out here to try and make something happen. Gap's going to stay about steady. You've got a very long time through this corner as Whitlock has gone off in the final corner. Uh, but Toomey is going to head down here. Yeah, you see that Fiore car blinking behind him. Not good news, really, for either of those drivers, because if Toomey doesn't know where Fiore is, that's how you get accidents happening. But he'll head through here. Good corner. Picks up about more than four tenths of a second. He actually picks up a lot of time there on Ben Fiore of Maris. He's going to drop back about half a second from Thomas Toomey just in that corner alone. So into the big 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 carousel here before you get down into the tight hairpin turn six it's a tricky complex but not nearly where we've seen the most issues today because that would be undoubtedly turn 10 that corner has been the death of multiple cars it feels like in this race burl has actually just pulled it back out on track he'll get up to 11 but he's going to be many laps behind whitlock in 10th See all these drivers make the corner just fine here. They'll get to head back through 12 and then further right through 13. You get to go down a tight little straight before you get two more hairpins to close out the lap uh, before you head back onto the big crunch right away. So it's Jordan Johnson still in second behind Armaham Dalit 1.1 seconds back of that lead car. Who turns uh, four and five through the carousel. We've seen a couple cars get loose through this here today, but we've only seen one accident. That was Burl, I believe, through turn three, the left-hander. He just caught too much of the curb, sent it into the fence. Everyone else has done pretty all right through there. We almost saw some practice crashes there, so... Bit, bit not as treacherous as I thought that would be, but the big problem zone has been this corner. Jordan Johnson and Ar Muhammad Alif are both through it very well, and they'll continue on here. Further down into the final section.
heading out of that final corner is our Muhammad Alif holding on to the one second gap he has over Jordan Johnson. But Johnson's going to try to cut that down here. The good run out of that last corner. And if you can get a good run out of that last corner, you're going to be looking really good with how long that straightaway is. A lot of time to try to close up. And as we watch this battle for the lead unfold, we're going to let you listen to the sounds of the cars. We're going to crank it up, and we will be right back here from the Collegiate I Racing League at Fuji. I racing league at Fuji. We are back and watching this battle for the lead between Jordan Johnson and our Muhammad Alif. Gaps down to about six tenths of a second uh, between those two cars heading down the front straightaway. And Jordan Johnson's gonna close. Gap is continuing to go down here. Into turn one, it's the battle for the lead. Jordan Johnson, Ar Muhammad Alif, he's all over the bumper. Ar Muhammad Alif has won in this win all season, and he hasn't gotten it yet. He has a win, Elite, or he has a win. Johnson wasn't here for it, and he doesn't feel like that counts. So this is his chance to finally get the win he wants to beat Jordan Johnson in a race and to make it happen here for the first time this season. But Jordan Johnson, who's dominated this series, winning or leading the points battle, just absolutely lights out every race all season, trying to claim that cash prize at the end, is right on his tail. And this is going to be an exciting battle as we head to the finish. Johnson might look up the inside. He decides better of it through turn 10. He'll stay behind a Leaf for now, but the Leaf can't quite get away. Look at the slide he's going to have through turn 13 there. He's looking a little to the outside, trying to find a way out of the spray from Ar Muhammad Alif right to the bumper of him right there. He's dropping a little bit back. He's going to want a really good final corner. And if he can get a good final corner, which we've seen him do a lot, he could get there. 
We'll see if it happens. He drops a little bit back. A little better exit, but he's got he's got the big straightaway here. This could really help him. If he can get that car within two tenths or so, he might have a chance. I think he's a little too far back as it stands, barring a send. But he's going to go for a send. He'll look to the outside of turn one on our Muhammad Alif. Not going to get there. Nearly contact through turn one for those two race cars. And Johnson is still all over the bumper. He'll look outside. He won't get there. We're back through turn three. And Johnson is still behind Alif with just under 20 minutes to go in this race. And one thing that we haven't seen yet that's going to come into play, pit stops. No one's got enough gas to make it to the end. Did you see Johnson all over the curb there? And he takes out our Muhammad Alif for the lead of the race. Alif is actually going to get it away, though. So with Jordan Johnson crashing into our Muhammad Alif, our Muhammad Alif gets it away in front, and he will retain a one-second advantage for the lead of this race over Jordan Johnson, and we'll see what the stewards have to say about that one, because that could end in a penalty for Johnson, and if so, that could set him all the way behind uh, Kale Davidson in third. So that'll be fun. Head through here and through this final bit of the racetrack. We're going to get a replay as they head to the final corner of the Elite and Jordan Johnson incident. We saw him get loose. He got loose on the curbing there. Couldn't get it onto the brakes in time. Misses the corner and goes straight into the right rear of our Muhammad Elif. For the lead of this race, see it right there, just gets loose. Tags him. And they're both around. As I was mentioning before that, though, and as might come into play now with that, pit stops are a thing you got to worry about in this race. No one's got enough gas unless the rain has uh, allowed them to save enough, so we're expecting one green flag pit stop from pretty much every car still out there. It's a Leaf leading. It's Johnson second. We are waiting to see if we get anything from the stewards on that incident. But for now, they race on, and it's Jordan Johnson eight tenths behind our Muhammad Alif. As we're actually going to look back to six now, it's Ben Fiore, who's been right behind Thomas Toomey for what feels like about half the race now. has gotten that gap under half a second, and he's still looking to try and make a move happen for that fifth position, get himself a couple extra points in that Marist College machine. Jordan Johnson on board right now. He'll chase down our Muhammad Alif. Provisionally, this is for the lead of the race. As, as we saw just a bit ago, the Jordan Johnson crashing into Alif. And we'll see if the stewards have anything to say on that in terms of an avoidable contact penalty. I believe the penalty for that would be about 10 seconds if he does get it. But we are going to wait and see if they make that call is down into turn one it's jordan johnson still on the bumper of our muhammad alif for that first position back through turn three jordan johnson still there on the bumper we're gonna head through the carousel it's jordan johnson two tenths of a second back dropping back to around three now kind of Floating between the two numbers. Johnson will get it through there without crashing this time. And he'll stay behind him. Gap extending now out to about half a second. See how this plays out. Stewards are investigating the Johnson incident that is under investigation. We'll see how that shakes out. What the conclusion of that is. But it's Jordan Johnson right now in second on our Muhammad Ali provisionally for the race lead here. And he's right on the bumper down in the 13. Had this go so long. He's up the inside. But he can't get there. And Alif will get back on the inside. He's going to run it a little wide, actually. And that might give Jordan Johnson the advantage he needs. He's along the outside through the final corner. 
How's this going to shake out? Let's find out. It's Jordan Johnson or Muhammad Ali side by side down the straightaway here. We got a car coming into the pits in front of him. It's Andrew Burl. Jordan Johnson's taking the lead for now. Our Muhammad Alif is going to look back to the outside. But he's not going to get there. So for right now, with 15 minutes left in the session, crash to pass Jordan Johnson on, I believe, his fourth attempt at that overtake is going to make it work. I think we saw a crash from Ryan Whitlock as well, as well around the same time in turn six. So he, he's about a minute back of a no frame. We saw him go off. We're going to get a replay of what happened to him. Yep, spins it out through turn six. Coming out almost collides with a couple other cars there. He's in a really awkward place kind of on the exit of that corner. But for right now, Jordan Johnson leads with our Muhammad Ali second. Cale Davidson in third, Bradley Skinker in fourth, the Ball State 2-3-4 in full effect here. Thomas Toomey is going to be running in fifth with Ben Fiore in sixth, Lucas Moody seventh, Hunter Hadesty currently our alumni winner sitting in eighth, but that position would be under threat from Edwin Onofre if he hadn't spun it or run wide through the last corner as I was talking about him, and that'll drop him about two and a half seconds back there. But Edwin Onofre is second in that alumni battle with Ryan Whitlock, the student, in 10th as our car is still in the race. Burl is kind of coming in and out of the pits here about five laps down. Still watching Ben Fiore, eight tenths back of Thomas Toomey in that Marist College machine working on the University of Virginia machine. And pit stops have begun because it's our Muhammad Alif into the pits for fuel. Green flag pit stop there for that car. They, um, this is a planned fuel stop. Everyone's got to make one. Our Muhammad Alif will be the first car in for that stop. And we will see how this shakes out for him. get a better pit run than Jordan Johnson. I think we've seen Jordan Johnson get the edge in most pit scenarios this year. But at least he's going to come down first and maybe jump him a little bit. It's Thomas Toomey in seventh right now for the University of Virginia. He'll make a pit stop. So he's in as well. You see Burrow trying to repair some of the damage to that car behind as Cale Davidson will move into second with that pit stop from his teammate or Muhammad Alif through the flat out right hander and we're back uh, to Hunter Hadesty or my bad yes this is Hunter Hadesty running in that seventh position here down through turn one driver we haven't seen much of today he's at a very quiet race kind of started out back but he's worked his way through the field and jordan johnson has come into the pit lane jordan johnson will make that pit stop right now you see uh believe that is Toomey leaving the pit lane after a very long pit stop for that car. But Jordan Johnson will be in right now. And we'll see where he comes out. There's our Muhammad Alif. And Jordan Johnson's come out six seconds ahead of him. So a big pit stop from Jordan Johnson there will put him way out in front. So here's uh, going to be our current leader as the pit cycle hasn't cycled around yet. It is Kale Davidson of Ball State yet to make a pit stop. So he'll head around through this third sector here. We'll see if he comes in this time or if he decides to stay out another lap.
Matt Nordberg. Here it's my bad. I'm reading the wrong name list. It is Kale Davidson heading through the last uh, corner here. So here is, uh, this is the uh, Kale Davidson who has not come into the pits here. He'll be coming around this time down into turn three. That is Ben Fiore who has made a pit stop there in front of him. Lucas Moody uh, has actually had an accident in turns 13 and 14. That's why he's showing up there. So Johnson, Alif, Fiore, Toomey, and Whitlock have all made the pit stops right now. We've got Skinker and Davidson who have not yet, and they're still out on the racetrack. Skinker is that car there in second. And I believe Lucas Moody will likely be coming in here for another pit stop. So he'll make that stop. He'll be, he is fifth right now. He'll likely cycle out around fifth or sixth we'll see where he comes out in relation to fiore and tumi which is where that main battle was occurring with him bradley stinker now still coming around here Let's see uh Davidson stays out, so he is not pit yet. We'll see what happens to Skinker. There's only eight minutes left in this race, so not a lot of time for that fuel stop to occur. Skinker will come down the front straightaway, and he will stay out as well. So no pit stops yet from Davidson or Skinker. Uh, same with Edwin Onofre and Hunter Hadesty. We're actually battling for position right now. Neither of these cars have made a pit stop yet, so this is this is for a spot, and I believe this is for the spot that will cycle around to be either eighth or ninth here, depending on when these cars pit, where they come out in relation to Thomas Tooby primarily. Edwin and Ofre seven tenths back of Hunter Hadesty. We'll see if either of them make the turn down pit road this time. Head through 14 and 15 into that uh, final hairpin there, turn 16. Down the straightaway, it's not a great run out for a no I think he's just gonna end up pretty much breaking even with Hadesty. Hadesty fakes a pit stop there, and a no will come in for real behind him. So Inofre is going to make his fuel pit stop with about six minutes left in this race. I thought Hasty might be making in. He made the little flick to the left, but he didn't end up committing to it. And now Cale Davidson, the leader with six and a half minutes to go, will be one of, uh, one of the four cars who have not come down yet is going to make that stop. So it's just Bradley Skinker and Hunter Hadesty still out on the racetrack right now. And Hadesty will make the stop, or Skinker will make the stop this time, leaving just Hunter Hadesty currently running in the fifth position uh, as he completes his lap and might pull it into the pits this time. We'll see how that cycles around. But for now, it'll cycle to Jordan Johnson in the lead of the race over our Muhammad Alif. And it'll be Cale Davidson who's going to exit the pits in third for Ball State ahead of Skinker. Hunter Hadesty is going to come through this final section of the track here. He's in sector three. He'll get ready uh, to come down the front straightaway, and we'll see if he'll pull that thing down pit road and how that'll work out for him here. So let's, let's find out how this goes. Hunter Hadesty will come down through the final corner. Will he make the pit stop this lap? Let's find out. I can't imagine he has that much more fuel to continue running it around like he has been. 
and he will not make the pit stop. So Hunter Hadesy thinks he's got enough fuel and he'll keep it out on the racetrack. Edwin Onofre has just crashed in turn six. He was stopped for an extended period of time down there. We'll see if we can maybe get something on that. Maybe not Onofre. Maybe not Onofre. Somebody had a big accident down there in turn six. It might have been Whitlock, actually, who was stopped for multiple seconds. We'll see. It was someone at the back. Yes, it is. Ryan Whitlock spins it out through turn six. Big accident for him down through there, but he'll get it back out and going in that ninth place position ahead of Edwin Onofre. Might have had to make another pit stop potentially for Onofre because he's ended up about 40 seconds back. We've seen him get more than his fair share of pit road penalties this season, so you never know. It's Hunter Hadesty in fifth. He'll continue to drive around here. We'll see if he makes the move down this time. Because if he doesn't make the move down this time, I, that's when you start to think about, does Hunter Hadesty have enough fuel to make it? Has he saved more fuel than everyone else in this race? But that's not really a thought unless he stays out this time. Because, I mean, with so few laps to go in this race... Let's see what he does. Hunter Hadesty will come down the straight. And he will stay out. So that Clemson car might have might have a little bit of fuel trickery up its sleeve. Because that car is still out on the racetrack. It has not pit yet. And it is the only car in the field to not pit yet. It is running in the fifth position. Ahead of Moody and Fiore, which is several spots ahead of where it was running before. So we'll see how that shakes out for him. If he can run that thing to the very end and get some fuel. Or get, get, get some positions out of a fuel strategy here. I would also give Hadesty the alumni win for this race. Beating out uh, Edwin Onofre, who I believe is the main competition, who is running... 10th the other alumni in the field are halterman uh currently out and burl currently uh about eight laps down in the pit lane right there who's still on hunter hadesty here in fifth we'll see him come through with three laps to go jordan johnson's your race leader but with three laps to go he'll come around here Crash in the final corner, or in the first corner. It's Ryan Whitlock, but he'll get it away, so maybe he just ran very wide. Hadesty will come through here now. Again, three to go. Does Hadesty have enough gas to go to the end of this race? Or will he have to pull it in here? That car is stuttering. But he'll keep it out, so he might be deploying some fuel saving here with how he's working that throttle to keep that car in position. You, yeah, you've seen him lose. He has lost two seconds to Lucas Moody just down the front straightaway. So that car is in full fuel-saving mode right now as Hunter Hadesty is trying to nurse it to the end of the race to get a top five on pitch strategy. As we're going to come to two to go for Jordan Johnson. Four and a half ahead of our Muhammad Alif, or six and a half ahead of our Muhammad Alif, sorry, is Jordan Johnson, race leader right now. He's got a lap car in there, too. It's Thomas Toomey running eighth as we lap traffic in that pack. Our Muhammad Alif, he feels a little faster. I've seen him pick up a little bit of time over the last couple laps, but with only two to go. Might just might not be enough with a great pit stop from Jordan Johnson. Is gonna pull him away. We go two to go. This time we'll get the white flag as Johnson comes to the line through the chicane right 
left. He'll go back right on exit into a series of two hairpins, and that'll take him out onto the straight. Edwin Onofre extremely slow through that last corner there. Hunter Hadesty will come down and will not pit. So let's go back to Jordan Johnson here. Race leader. Going to come around, I believe, to the white flag here. We're going to see... We are showing final lap. I believe this is the white flag. We'll find out here as we go across. And yeah. Let's see. Oh, they are waving the checkers. So Jordan Johnson's going to win the race tonight at Fuji Speedway. He must have crossed that line right after the clock ran out because we were showing uh, two to go there. But Jordan Johnson will win the race. That's the checkered flag. Our Muhammad Alif takes second tonight. And Cale Davidson will cross the line to take third. And we're going to have to be a little while behind him. A lot of cars still let, left to cross. It's Bradley Skinker in fourth. Hunter Hadesty will get fifth. Lucas Moody is actually going to try to chase down Hadesty. Hadesty is fuel saving so hard that he's got that gap down by about seven seconds. But there might not be enough time for Moody to catch him. Let's see how this shakes out, because this could get dicey going down the straightaway, depending on how much gas that car actually has. And Moody's picking up some time here. He is off the gas a lot, and Moody is coming. This is going to be for fifth to the line. Does Hunter Hadesty have the gas? He's offline. Moody is there. Here we go. This is going to be for fifth at the line. Hadesty's car is sputtering. Moody's full power. And Moody's going to get him at the line. Lucas Moody takes fifth for Ball State. Our alumni winner, Hunter Hadesty, will be sixth on a pitch strategy. And Ben Fiore can't quite get to him in time and will finish seventh. So we'll get the results for you here coming up tonight, and we'll get the grid up as well for you. We're still, we still do not have word on the Jordan Johnson R. Muhammad Alif incident that we saw earlier in the race. Uh, if a penalty gets applied for that incident, it will be applied post-race. So for now, our provisional winner, barring any review, is going to be Jordan Johnson of Ball State Uni or Jordan Johnson of Kent State University, followed closely by R. Muhammad Alif of Ball State University. Cale Davidson, Bradley Skinker, and Lucas Moody, all Ball State teammates, finishing third, fourth, and fifth tonight. Hunter Hadesty, sixth for Clemson. Ben Fiore will be seventh. Uh, from Marist College, and Thomas Toomey, 8th from the University of Virginia, Ryan Whitlock, 9th from University of Alabama Huntsville, and Edwin Onofre, 10th from UNT. And rounding out the field tonight, we've got Andrew Burl, 11th from Clemson, Clint Holterman, 12th from UNC Charlotte, uh, three St. Clair cars, Athena LeClaire will finish 13th as the last car in the race, Adrian Tubakovich and Alan Hong, uh, a lot from uh, St. Clair College and Mark Turek of PCT all did not make the 107% rule and were uh, unable to run the race tonight. We're going to bring in a couple drivers here for the interviews. We're going to get our top three podium finishers along with our alumni winter alumni winner, Hunter Hadesty here to talk about that fuel strategy and what was going through his mind there. So we are going to set these interviews up. We'll get them up the elevator into the booth here shortly. We'll bring this out. I'm pulling these cars up after an exciting race. Yeah, stewards... Stewards' uh, verdict is in unofficial results is going to be Jordan Johnson, a Leaf, and then Kale Davidson. We will get Kale Davidson, our third place finisher tonight. Myself in one. the booth. Hi, Kale. Hi. Hello. Uh, congrats on your third place finish tonight. Look, How different you. is this track oh, in the rain compared to the dry? Um. Well, yeah. The the track 
I don't I can't really say I've driven this track with the GTP car in the drive. We've we've done some GT3 stuff with it, but it's definitely a pretty low speed kind of track. So the fact that having to drive GTP cars around here and the rain did not help, but it was definitely fun because you're like counter steering halfway through the yeah, corner, just trying to keep the car going in a straight line. So uh, the two, three, four, five from Ball State tonight, a great run from your team. Have y'all been like practicing in the rain to try and prepare for these kind of races? Um, so it's kind of funny that you said that because we did like our first practice session today, but we have more experience because as a team, we ran the Sebring 12 hours, but we ended up running the LMP2 class. So we had more kind of experience running in the rain kind of during LMP2. So switching into the GTP was definitely a bit of a, a swap right there. All right. And uh, do you have anyone that you want to shout out on the broadcast tonight? Yeah, I uh, definitely want to shout out all of my teammates. Um, Bradley Lucas, Alif, and then our esports director, Dan Marino and BK, and then shout out my mom, dad, grandma, and grandpa, and then Indy Hoodrats for sponsoring the car. Congrats on the third place finish then tonight, Kale Davidson. Thank you. Yeah, it was awesome. So All right, we're gonna that was get someone here. else pulled up in the booth brother, here. We'll see uh, who is up next for the interviews. We're going to call up second place, our Muhammad Ali from Ball State in the booth. Another second place finish tonight. Uh, congrats on the second place. But how does it feel to be so close there? You led a lot of laps, but you couldn't get it done in the end. Yeah, uh, would have loved to win, but yeah. Uh... Yeah, I tried my best really uh, to to stay in front, but yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, Acura. I think the first two sectors were was like a rocket ship, but yeah, we we tried our best. We I think we kept him behind for like 16 laps or something until until that incident, and then until he got past. So I guess some of the damage kind of helped uh, helped the case, but yeah, uh, we'll take the P2, P3, P4, and P5, I guess. Because the incident there like in your view what happened there with that contact um seems like jordan just locked up into me uh the car just his car seemed to just go straight um i think he went wide coming uh he he was trying the outside line so i think he went on the curb which uh probably just lost a lot of traction and just went went straight into me so i don't know i'm looking forward to what the stewards would say uh, considering I got my win taken away um, in Indy, um, I don't know if it's a similar thing, but it was still an incident. So, so yeah, looking forward to see. Yeah, we're we're still waiting on the decision on that one. With with rain being out a couple weeks now, how are you liking it? Are you liking the rain in these cars that this kind of track? I love it. I always loved rain. Um, even I mean, you saw. I think if you guys saw the practice session, I could. I couldn't get it down to like a 37 or something, um, even in quality, but I just kept pushing. Uh, the car was, was iffy, was tricky, but it was on the knife edge. So I, w I was just trying to stay on that edge without going over, over the limit. And it kind of paid off. Uh, we got the lead and then we just led all the way, like most more or half the race. So yeah, so unfortunate that's how it, it, it should end, but. That's racing, I guess, and uh, we'll see what the stewards would say. Uh, congrats on the second place finish tonight provisionally, our Muhammad Ali. Thank you. We'll get someone else pulled up in the booth here for this next interview. Uh, waiting on... We'll, we'll, we will get our sixth, or, yes, our sixth place finisher and our alumni winner for tonight, Hunter Hadesty. Congrats on the alumni win. Tell us about that fuel strategy. Oh, I didn't even realize that. Nice. Uh, yeah, so as I was uh, kind of talking with uh, some of the Ball State guys there, I didn't even think about it until halfway through the race. Um, I, I was wondering how people were doing on fuel, and uh, my, like, lap estimator kept jumping back and forth between good and not making it, and I was like, ah, let's try it, I'll go for it. Uh, and yeah, just basically clutched in, coasted into the braking areas, and just saved that little bit extra. How close to the line was it that you ran out? Because we saw you coasting like all the way through sector three. Oh yeah, the last lap, I had to drive so slow, and as I turned the final corner, I hit, or actually right before that, I hit zero gallons. So as I turned the corner, I just 
gassed it to get any sort of momentum, and then it ran out right there, and it was just sputtering to the line. <laughs> Do you think if we get more raid races in this series, that might end up as a viable strategy, or is that just like a one-time thing with Fuji? Uh, maybe. Um, I mean, Fuji uh, certainly, yeah, helps with the uh, the big braking zone, so you can save a lot of fuel down the main straightaway. Um, but, you know, with the, the wet weather, you do use less, so potentially. All right. Uh, congrats on the alumni win, then, Hunter Hadesty. Yeah, thank you. All right, so we're going to work on getting our race winner, uh, Jordan Johnson, up into the booth here for the next interview, winning one of, I believe, about eight or nine races now this season. Hi, Jordan. Uh, congrats on the win tonight. Hi, thanks. Uh, yeah, a little bit more stressful than I wanted it to be. I, I kind of brought that upon myself. Yeah, walk us not just through like the contact with the leaf, but all the chasing down that you had to do beforehand to get up there. Uh, yeah, well, I couldn't see anything, so um, not much to recap. Uh, happy little accident. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there, there, there really wasn't too much. I knew I had the pace, uh, so it was just a matter of getting past. It took a lot, lot longer than I meant for it to. It, it just kept making small little mistakes here and there, but just eventually kept it together and was able to get something going. Once the pit phase came and with the scariest pit entry I've ever had in my life because I locked the front right tire as soon as I touched the brakes and uh, just brought home as much pace as I could from there just to kind of make the biggest gap possible. I mean, you've been kind of noticing your pit stops this season, especially compared to some of the drivers like Leaf, have been like seconds faster. Is that something you try to like work on at these tracks or is that just like accident? <laughs> No, I mean, it's something, especially with running the official IMSA series format that we run, at least compared to the iRacing IMSA, not real life IMSA. Um, it, it's very normal to to kind of try to get a little bit of fuel saving in here and there. Um, it, it, it's just kind of part of the natural flow of things. So it, it is something I'm used to. You normally don't make much use of it here in kind of the one class prototype races. Uh, so I'm not relying on it too much, but I think it might just be a difference of I'm just doing kind of a, a little bit versus some people just kind of going full flat out and losing out there. But it, it is just kind of incremental things that kind of add up from there. Gotcha. Rain, rain's been out for about a couple of weeks now. Are you liking these rain races? Do you want to maybe see more of these in this series? Um. Well, if I make it less stressful for myself, then yeah, absolutely. I feel like in the GTPs on one of probably the best rain drivers on the service, but I did not show up today, at least in terms of how I drove on Fuji. Uh, my setup was just not working with what we had here. It was terrible. I was really fighting the balance of the car all race long. So I will come back with maybe a little bit different setup if I come back to Fuji in the wet, but um, maybe in the future, a couple more rain races wouldn't, wouldn't hurt. I enjoy them. They're definitely a, a test of skill, but uh, I, I think a lot of the other drivers also would probably prefer just running it in the dry of what they're used to. All right. Congrats on the win tonight, uh, Jordan Johnson. Thank you. All right. So we'll get these results pulled up for you one more time here to close out the broadcast tonight. Jordan Johnson, our race winner uh, in that Acura for Kent State University. Muhammad Alif uh, in second place uh, from Ball State. Cale Davidson will take third. Bradley Skinker will take fourth, and Lucas Moody will take fifth, All also from Ball State University. Hunter Hadesty will bring it home sixth for Clemson, and Ben Fiore seventh for Marist College. Thomas Toomey eighth uh, for the University of Virginia, and Ryan Whitlock ninth from the University of Alabama at Huntsville. Edwin Onofre tenth from the University of North Texas, and I believe it'll be Andrew Burrell in eleventh from Clemson. Clint Halterman will bring it home 12th from UNC Charlotte. Athena LeClaire will bring it home 13th from St. Clair. And the other three cars uh, did not make the grid for tonight's race. So an exciting one here tonight from Mount Fuji, but we've got more CIL action coming up your way over the next couple of weeks. Next up is going to be Monday. We're at Nashville for the College Cup Series. We will have the Melody in the Noise 200 presented by the Familiar Strange. That's at Nashville Super Speedway. Monday night, uh, 8.30 p.m. Eastern. That broadcast will go live, and that's a track that is always a lot of fun in the CIL. We had a great time there 
during the fall semester, and I'm sure that it will not disappoint in the spring. Next up, the uh, Formula College Series will run the 12th race of their schedule at Zandvoort, a track we visited a couple weeks ago in the College Prototype Challenge for the Dutch Grand Prix. It was a really fun race in the prototypes. It's a very fun track on iRacing, and we'll see if that uh, will carry over to the Formula College Series as well. And next week, right here on Thursday in the Collegiate Prototype Challenge, we're going to have Road America up in Wisconsin, one of the classic American road courses. That'll be this time next week, the 4th on a Thursday, and you can be here for that as we run Road America. It's been a great race tonight in the Collegiate Prototype Challenge. Congrats to our winner, Jordan Johnson, our second-place finisher, our Muhammad Alif, and our third-place finisher, Kale Davidson, along with our alumni winner, uh, Hunter Hadesty. Fun one tonight. Uh, make sure to join us next week, next Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday for more CIL. See ya.